Go for uh, naming uh, organic compounds. Uh, there is a system uh, that was set up by IUPAC, which is the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. And uh, yeah, basically it's just a system to uh, determine or, or to give specific names for the many uh, organic compounds. So if I have a compound like, uh, let's say something like this. And put a couple of other groups over here. Right. So store this group here like that and um, just like this. <clears throat> First thing we need to do is identify parent chain, which is just the longest um, the longest part of the molecule in terms of the uh, uh, consecutive um, carbons that are uh, attached to each other. Right, so you might say, well, okay, let's see, maybe I'll start over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What about here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That'd be the longest one. What if I start from here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, that's the, uh, that's the same thing. Uh, so this would be considered a, this would be considered None, right? Because it's nine carbons long. And um, next, what I'm going to need to do is find where first substituent is. Well, let's say where the first substituent uh, begins. That may sound a little redundant, but what we mean by that is if we start from this side or this side, uh, our numbering in terms of the number one carbon will um, be prioritized at the lowest possible number. Uh, find where the first substituent begins. This gets the lowest possible number, right? Now, in this case, what you notice is that, well, we have a, um, we have a carbon or a methyl group attached to this number two carbon here if we start from this side and we also have actually two methyl groups um, starting from uh, or actually at number two if we start from this side so which side is number one this side or this side well in the case of a tie there's a tiebreaker a second substituent on this carbon here in other words if this wasn't there then we would have to do some more thinking as to where uh, carbon number one would be but since this is here, we'll call this number one, number two, number three, number four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And again, the reason why uh, I made this uh, number eight, nine instead of number one and two is because in the case of a tie, we have a second substituent, which is, which is the tiebreaker. Right? We have a second substituent here. That's the, uh, that's the tiebreaker. So what we can even do is after uh, name the parent chain, we can kind of circle the substituents, maybe to separate them, make it a little bit easier. We just kind of circle these just to separate them. These are all of our substituents, right? So we can say that uh, in the case of a tie, the second substituent gets lowest possible number. Right? Obviously, if this wasn't here, there would be no question. Well, this is where the first substituent or set of substituents begins, so this is going to be number one, number two, 
its lowest possible number, but now we have a tie. We could just start from either end. But now we have to get the second substituent lowest possible number, so uh, these two guys wins, right? They, they, these two guys win over this guy over here. So that's why we begin on this side. And then after that, um, what we do is we just, when we're writing the name, we just list an alphabetical order, right? List. List or name in alphabetical order. In other words, we have our parent chain now, and uh, what I'll do is maybe off to the side, maybe off to the side, I'll just uh, list our substituents. So we have here what we have 2, 2, 8 trimethyl. 2, 2, 8. Trimethyl just means three methyl groups. Two of them at the uh, two carbon, one at eight carbon. So each one of these refers to the placement of each methyl group. We also have a uh, four ethyl. We have a four ethyl. Our um, other substituent is uh, finally going to be this benzene ring, which in, in the case of it being a substituent, it's not called benzene anymore. It's called a phenyl group. So we have six phenyl. A common mistake. When benzene is a substituent, it's not called benzene anymore, it's a phenyl, and vice versa. If benzene is part of the, uh, of the parent, then it's not called a phenyl group. It's just called um, you know, something, something benzene. But again, in this case, since uh, it's a substituent of this longer parent chain, then it's a uh, phenyl group. What, why isn't this the parent? Well, this is six carbons or less in this ring, right? So since this parent, or, or since the, these uh, groups of uh, carbons on the outside of the ring contain more than six, this has to be a substituent, can be a parent. Once we have our substituents kind of organized here, we can then just kind of list them or, or, or name them uh, in alphabetical order. So it's going to go E, it's going to come before M, it's going to come before P. Uh, yeah, methyl is considered the uh, priority in terms of alphabetization. We're going to ignore this tri, or if it was like a dimethyl. Okay, we're going to focus on this M right here, and this E, and this P. So if we list that alphabetically, we have to put the E, the 4-ethyl group, first and name it. So I'll just put 4 and capitalize it, since it's the first substituent. So we have 4-ethyl, and then we have next the trimethyl substituent, so I'm going to put a dash, 2, comma, 2, comma, 8. That's going to be trimethyl. And I'm going to run out of space here. Two, 2, 8 trimethyl. Dash, 6 dash fennel none it looks kind of a, like a long complicated name but when you break it down and in, in kind of an organized fashion you realize that uh, it, it's really not so bad just to um, just to sum up those steps again first thing we did was first thing we did was we found the uh, parent chain one two three four five six seven eight nine we listed that first we knew it was a no name and after that, well, it, it got a little bit tricky because we had a methyl group on the second carbon from this end and a methyl group on the second carbon from this end. So we knew it was a nine-member uh, chain called no name, but we weren't sure where to begin. So the tiebreaker was this guy here. The tiebreaker was this guy here, the second substituent. Right? Or, or this, well, I guess technically it's a third substituent, but... I guess the uh, second substituent apart from these two guys here is the tiebreaker. So that needs to get the lowest possible number. So this this has to be a uh, th this has to be a two. Right, this has to be a two. Otherwise, it would have been what the number eight, which we can't have. So now we know uh, which direction to go, starting from number one over here, ending at number nine here. And from there, if we just circle our substituents and just kind of list them, then put it in, in, in an alphabetical, uh, 
put in alphabetical order should become uh, pretty easy.